Yo. 2013 Yukon. It's got a little transmission cooler line leak, so I'm gonna replace the transmission cooler lines on this. There are a whole bunch of different transmissions on these Suburbans and Silverados from all the years that they have. This is the part number I have for this one. It's a 6L80 six-speed transmission. So the transmission side looks like this. Um, sometimes some of these have thermostats on them. This one does not. Some are heavy duty. The heavy duty ones have an oil cooler in the front of the grill. This one does not. This is just standard 6L80 1500 stuff. I'm going to start by disconnecting the lines from the radiator. There's a little plastic keeper on here that just pops off with a screwdriver. There's a little metal retainer in here that's holding the line in. I can pop it out with a pick if I really want to. If you do that, you're going to need to reuse it. You just got to make sure not to bend it and to put it back in the same place you took it out. Um, I have one of these fan-fangled items that are used for taking these off. You just put it in here like this, and then you turn it. And when you turn it, if you can see, it pops that clip up. And then I can just pull it straight back. I can't do that yet, though. There's a 10 millimeter screw I gotta take off right here. It's bolted into the radiator. And I think I got it out. I should be able to just hold on to this tool and pull it out. And uh, now I get to go find my tool. There's a line on the bottom too, same deal. Now if you follow the yellow brick road, in this case it will be the transmission line. You will see it runs all the way across to the driver's side on the bottom, which is kind of strange because usually on GM transmissions, the lines are on the passenger side by the dipstick tube. So I'm going to unbolt this. It's a 13 millimeter. And I'm going to pull this line off and I'm going to let it drool all over the place. Just give it a wiggle. It'll come off. I'm going to let it drip like mad for a while. There's a plastic hanger here that comes with the new line. So I can just take that off with a tool of some kind. There's one bracket left that's right next to the front axle on a four-wheel drive on the passenger side next to the oil pan. I can just take a pair of pliers and just grab onto the clip in the line and give it a twist and pop these off. Just like so. Did you get that? Did you get that? Just to make my life a little easier, I'm going to take this windage tray off. A lot of times there's an aluminum skid plate under most of these vehicles right here. Um, this one doesn't have one. It looks like it never did. There's no threads where the screws are supposed to go. These are 15 millimeter. Sometimes they're 13s, I think. There's four of these. And then I can get at these transmission lines real easy if I need to. I'm going to try to get this all out in one piece. I don't know how it's going to go. They can be a major pain. Sometimes you got to bend them a little bit. And a lot of times the lines that you buy are already all bent up just from shipping and whatever else. I can't imagine this is going to come out real easy. It looks like it's crammed in here real good. I'm just going to get my drain pan out of the way now. And, uh... I'm sure I will make a mess from here on out. 
and I'm going to have to bend these lines a little bit to get them in and out, I'm sure. But whatever. Oh, I just shined half of my shoe. Little bend here and a little bend there, and I got them out. All right, I'm going to try to put these new lines in. I put some cheesy caps on the end just to make sure when I stab them through everything, I don't get any dirt or junk inside the line. And of course, I'm probably going to have to bend these too, just like I bent the other ones getting them out. But we'll see. Let the fun begin. Well, better yet, let the fun end. That'd be even better. Well, that's about close enough for right now, I think. Before I bolt everything up to the radiator, I'm going to deal with this first. Because I'm going to work my way here, bolt it down, and I'm going to work my way that way. Because I know i got to bend stuff, so it's best if I just bolt this in first. And then bend everything along the way. The gasket's still on here. I'm going to peel that off. Suppose I can hit this with a razor blade. I'm just going to scrape it like so. Should give it a nice clean surface. A lot of people might want to lubricate this seal. It's already, it's, it's already on here. I'm not going to lube it though, I'm just going to leave it dry. It'll be fine. I'm going to try to stab this up here. Ugh. Stick it in the hole, like so. Might as well put this clamp on here. This is an 8 by 125 millimeter bolt into aluminum, so I'm just going to assume right off it's at about 18 foot-pounds of torque, so I'm actually going to use a torque wrench on this and torque it down. At least try to. I kind of got a drive shaft in my way here. I'm going to try a shorter... I got my torque wrench touching this line. I don't I don't trust it. I don't know if it's getting an accurate reading or not. Okay, now I know it's not touching that line and it feels really nice. So now I'm just going to I'm just going to put the other hanger on the oil pan and work everything that way and bend everything as I need to as I go. It looks like these are going to go in a lot easier than they came out. When it comes to these clips, like I say, they look like an E if you got to take them out with a pick and you don't have that fancy tool I got, which you probably don't, you want to make darn sure you don't bend these. If you do, you got to bend them back exactly the way they were or just go get new ones and snap them in here. And really, when you put them in, they really don't, they don't wiggle around a lot. You know, you can turn them side to side a little bit. 
but they're really kind of kind of tight in there. So they they just move this way, and then and then and then not not any other way. So you know, I like using that tool just because I know I didn't bend the clip at all. You don't really need to do this either, but I have a little bit of silicone paste. I'm going to put around here just so I know it slides into that o-ring really nice. And I'm going to snap this in here. And I just want to make sure it's snapped in all the way. I wiggle it around and it doesn't want to pop back out. And I know it's snapped in all the way too because I, I saw this clip right here expand and contract. And now I know it's in there all the way. So I can put this on. That little retainer's got to be on there too because if this line moves around once in a while, that clip can pop off. So you got to have that retainer on there. Now I can put this clamp on. They're probably about 8 foot pounds. 106 inch pounds is probably right for the torque on these. I'm just going to do them by hand. And that's it. If you read the dipstick, it says it takes Dextron 6. Transmission temperature, you want to check at 160 to 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Transmission must be hot in crosshatch engine idling check in park. And there's your crosshatches right there. You want it in the hot. I'm sure it only lost about a quarter of a cup of fluid, so it's probably fine. But I'm going to run it and check it anyways and make sure the level's good. I'm going to put the skid plates on. I don't, I don't like to put any more than probably 15 foot-pounds of torque on them skid plates because they like, you take them on and off all the time and they're, they're not, they're not going to go anywhere. And I, I don't like over-tightening them because they strip out really easy. So I'm going to put the covers on and um, run the car, make sure the level's good, and call it a job. Okay, bye.